What's up guys, it's Matt Barnes Jones, MCJ here, back with another video about power effects and custom pages. And this time what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the Structuro smart button method for adding um, custom buttons to the ribbon that will launch custom pages. So if you didn't know, Structuro released a product or, or a package called the uh, Smart Button Solution. This is a solution you can install to any one of your Dataverse or Dynamics 365 environments. And what it does is it gives you the ability to use the Ribbon Workbench to add some, some additional buttons and some additional functionalities into uh, model-driven apps. And he updated the solution recently to include the ability to open custom pages or dialogues from a smart button. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at how you can add these smart buttons to these uh, to your model driven apps. So let's take a look at it. So in my previous video, I showed how to launch. Uh, I showed that we can launch a smart button, which is this one up here, that will uh, that will launch a custom page and um, display a custom page. So we can click this, and it launches this custom page here. Now what I'm going to show you is how to do this using the Ribbon Workbench. So we'll close this one down and we'll open the Ribbon Workbench. So this is the Ribbon Workbench that I've already logged into my environment and I've opened my solution that just contains the entity that we want to look at, which is my contacts entity. And we can see we have my, um, my custom button here, the open custom page, uh, already here and we can see this is a custom button. So let's add another one which is this button down here on the left. It says open dialogue and we'll pop it in right next to the uh, the current one. And as we do that it should open a little dialogue which is this here and it gives us some options. So we have title, we have dialogue URL, copy from canvas app details or custom page unique name, width with an EG, height with an EG and dialogue text. So the title is going to be what we have on this bar here. So we'll call this new dialogue uh, ribbon workbench button. Bit long, but it'll do. Um, then we need the dialogue URL uh, or the canvas app a unique name. So the easiest way to do that is to go back to our solution and we can open up our model driven uh, app designer, which is this new one here. And we can see we've got all our, our entities and stuff and we can choose the custom page that we want to add from the tree on the left. And then it's going to show us this unique name on the right. So we'll copy this out to our clipboard and we'll go back to the ribbon workbench and we'll paste that in there. Uh, next, we choose the width and the height uh, we can choose zero for the height if it's a sidebar. Um, so we could maybe put in, um, say, uh, 520 or 530 in here. Uh, and we'll choose um, uh, 400 for this one. Uh, and then we can also put a, a title on here as well. So, so I could put something like um, such a cool feature. And we can press OK. And that's all you need to do. So uh, we can see that we've got our button here. Uh, we can rename these buttons if we wish, uh, and it'll automatically give us a command as well. So the new um, button two, um, button two dev one, which is what it's called. Uh, we can see that one, and then we've also got it down here. I oh, know that's the first one, isn't it? Uh, which one's the one we want to use? Click that one, and it'll tell us. Uh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, sorry, it's button four. So button four, we can see we've got all our details. So that's our um, URL or our app, app, app name. Uh, we've got a text. I've just clicked off it for some reason. Um, I've got a text. My computer runs slowly. Um, we can see we've got all the, all the details in here. Uh, we could change the image if we wanted to. We've got the image thing here. And we can also see that we have, it automatically creates commands for us. So the ribbon workbench is going to create the button for us. And then the button is going to have a command and the command is what's trying to do stuff. So we can see it's using uh, the solution here and it's going to pass a bunch of parameters to our custom page so it opens in the right way. So we can see the string parameter, which is the name of the um, name of the app. Uh, the CRM parameter primary item IDs, which means we're going to get that entity ID from um, from the app itself. 
uh, we've got the height and the width, we've got the, the title here, and we've got some additional things here. So once we're happy with this, once we've got our button, once we've named it what we want, placed it where we want, we can publish this solution and see it in action. So I'll click publish. Uh, yes, I want to do this. Do make sure you take a backup of your solution and your environments before you make any changes to the ribbon. It's just good practice. And a few minutes later, we've got everything imported. It's all good. So we'll go back to our model driven app. We'll go back to our contact page. And if we refresh the page, uh, maybe once or twice, we should see a new button in the ribbon. And now that the page is loaded up, we can see that we have a new button up here. So we have our original one and we have our new one. And if we cross our fingers and click the button, hopefully it'll launch the app. So we can see it says such a cool feature at the top. Uh, this isn't a very optimized uh, form, but we can see it's over there a little bit. Uh, I do need to move some stuff around, but here is my app. If I make it bigger, uh, it may take a second to, to render and load. Uh, but we can see we do have the, the bits of my app here. It's not great. I do need to build one that's specific for this. Uh, but this is a really cool um, use case for using a, um, a model drone app and a custom page. So you can use the smart button solution to do it from here. Okay, so we've done this using the Ribbon Workbench and we've launched this button. However, one of the things that is in addition to this is the fact that you can actually use um, the, the commanding to use the JavaScript inside these smart buttons to do the same thing. So if you don't want to write your own JavaScript for each one of these, one thing that you can do is you can use the smart button solution if you have it installed in your environment and then call that from PowerFX um, and the commanding uh, designer to actually launch a, uh, a custom page from there. So let's take a look at that. So we'll go back to our model driven designer here and we'll go to, uh, we'll go to uh, let's choose contact again, because that's where we are. Choose contact, click on ellipsis and click edit in command bar preview. And we will choose the, um, the actually let's choose, yeah, let's choose the main, no, let's choose the main grid. So let's choose somewhere slightly different. So this is the, uh, the grid on the outside. Uh, no, actually let's choose main, main form. Choose that one. Uh, so this is the main form. Uh, we're just gonna wait for that to load up. And now that's loaded up, we can see we have all our different buttons. So you'll notice that the, the ones from the ribbon workbench, we can't edit them here because we say this button's read only, it's a legacy button, it's not supported at the moment. Basically, we can't edit any of the parameters that we have in here. We have to go into the ribbon workbench to edit those things. What we can do instead is we can click new command. That's going to give us a new button. And we'll, we'll call this the Power uh, FX uh, Ribbon Workbench um, button. Uh, we can give it an icon if we want. So we can choose something random because uh, why not? Uh, we'll choose the one that looks like add a friend. Oh, let's choose that one. Um, and from here, we can choose run, uh, instead of run formula, we can choose run JavaScript. Now, all of the JavaScript for the smart buttons is, in, is inside the smart button solution. But because it's just JavaScript, we can actually use it as part of this. So from the drop down, we can see this one that's here that says dev1 underscore js forward slash smart button client. We can choose that one. Uh, and that's going to give us access to uh, the, the JavaScript library. Now, now that we've got the JavaScript library, one of the things we need to do is we need to um, add the function name. So I'm just gonna copy this because I'm following uh, Scott's instructions, which I will absolutely um, just paste the link to underneath. And you really need to go and follow Scott's instructions because this is the way that you're going to do it. So this is the function, smart buttons, client hook, smart buttons dot open dialog. 
that's the function inside of the uh, library to use. And then we can add a series of parameters that will match those parameters that we saw inside of the um, uh, the, the ribbon workbench where we saw all those different parameters, we can add those same parameters in here. So the first parameter, we're going to choose, so we're doing this on a form, so we're going to choose primary item ID, uh, primary item IDs. If you if you are doing this on a grid, you can actually use uh, the, which one is it? Selected control, selected items um, IDs. So another one, that one. Uh, so that's some item IDs. So use that one if you're using a grid, use primary item IDs if you're on a form. Again, read Scott's blog for all these details. So that's parameter one. Uh, parameter two is the unique uh, name for your app. So again, we'll launch the same thing. So this one will be a string and we will launch uh, this and we'll choose that there. So that's the name of the app that we're going to open, the same one that we saw previously. I'll choose add a new parameter. Um, the parameter three is the width of your dialog and parameter four is the height of your dialog. So again, um, these are um, these are numbers. Uh, so you need to choose number from the parameter list uh, number. Uh, and in this one, we're gonna choose uh, 750. And in this one, we're gonna choose 600, make it a bit bigger this time. So the parameter three and four is height and width. Uh, parameter five is the title of your dialogue. Um, uh, cool launching of a dia dialogue bro. Uh, parameter six is primary control. So again, this is another built-in one. And um, parameter seven is another built-in one called selected control. Uh, selected control. So you need these seven parameters. You need the primary item ID, so that's the uh, GUID of the record that you're in, the you launching is from. You need the um, canvas, you need the trust and page name, so the canvas app name, this one. Parameters three and four are height and width. Parameter five is your title. Parameter six is your primary control and primary seven is your selected control. And if we look back at the ribbon workbench, we can see the same thing here. So we can see Parameter is primary control, then the name of the canvas app, height, width, title, primary control, such to control, and they have an additional one for command there. Uh, but yeah, that is all you need. So once you've done that, you can save and publish, and then we can go and take a look at it. Okay, so uh, after a little bit of uh, troubleshooting later, um, I realized that I didn't set parameter four to a number, so it gave me an error. So we've now saved and published and we'll go back and we will refresh our page and we'll launch this. So now that that's loaded up, we can click on our PowerFX RWB button and we can see it launches our dialogue here or our trust and page here. And we can see um, that it loads up with our different things. So there you have it. Again, this is not optimized for using a dialogue and things like that. It's just a different custom page to, to show you. Uh, but that's that's all you need. So um, there's two methods there on how to use Structuro's awesome smart button solution. Um, I feel like Scott was watching us. I might put a picture of him up here somewhere or up there somewhere, um, like watching me uh, do this um, and not judging. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really that easy. So you can either do it through the Ribbon Workbench, which many of you might be familiar with, but you can also launch it directly from inside of the command designer using the same libraries using uh, that the smart buttons use. And you can use all their functions and use all the functionality and you can get awesome things just like this. So there you go. Which method will you choose, Ribbon Workbench or Direct from the Command Designer? Let me know in the comments down below and why. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, click the subscribe button, stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you next time.